Hi, my name is Hadra and I thank you for finding your way to my channel. This is my first book review and we are treating. In the Chest of a Woman by the late Efo Kojo Maube. I believe many of you have read it and so I'll give a backstory. For those who read it a very long time ago to refresh your memories and also for those who probably have not read it to have an idea what the story is about the story is about a young princess nanaya who challenged her dying mother the queen of ebusa kingdom and the elders of the land when the queen named her young brother kwekutria as her successor instead of her as the eldest child, she was supposed to succeed the queen. However, per the customs of the land, kingship rightfully belonged to the male gender and the only time a woman was allowed to ascend the throne was when there was no male to do so. And in this case, she had a young brother. Even though Nanaya stood against the customs, her brother Nana Kwekudria was still made the king of Ebusa kingdom. The queen was unhappy with her daughter's dissatisfaction. So as a form of damage control, she made a decree before her final breath that any of the siblings who first brought forth a son shall have that son ascending the throne. Years later, Nana Kwekudia had a daughter and unfortunately for Nanaya, she had a daughter too. I used unfortunately because we listened to her in the story expressing her disappointment when she had a daughter instead of a son as the oracles she visited predicted. She went to all extents including eliminating people who knew about the child's real identity when she was born just to hide it from the world that she had a daughter. Even her husband was not spared. Namaya named her daughter Ousu, which is a name given to the male gender, and she went ahead to bring him up as such, convincing everybody that she indeed had a son and not a daughter. The rest of the story revolved around the challenges Ousu faced while growing up, just because he had to fulfill or follow the path her mother had created for her, even before she was born. One of the themes explored in the story is also a popular quote in the story and that is in the chest of a woman is not an extension of breast and a feeble heart but the flaming desire to possess and use power. Namaya's ambition to ascend the throne of Ebusa kingdom is clearly what sets the whole story in motion and we see Efo Kujo giving us a hint of her desire for power at the beginning of the play. The Oari game was a foreshadow of what was to come. Aside the tactical knowledge of the game she exhibited, there was the part where she made us know that she never gives up on her ambitions. In the first leg of the play, when Owusu was disappointed because he had lost the game, what she said was, you needn't look so sad. All isn't lost yet. There might be another chance. Just keep your eyes and mind open. Also, Efo Kojo chose his words cleverly when he used flaming desire. What comes to mind when you hear the word flame? Fire. And we all know what fire does. It burns whatever stands in its path. And we see Namaya doing just that. She needed to feed the flaming desire so much that she was ready to sacrifice anyone at all, including her own child, Ozu. Another theme explored in the story is gender inequality in terms of positions. Even in this age that we have women occupying leadership positions, gender inequality is still evident. In the story, Nanaya's mother sat on that throne even though she was a woman, and I am certain she ruled as a leader. A good leader regardless of agenda. They intentionally refused to accept that leadership was about competency and not gender. The sad part however is Nanaya who was fighting that very system that she was so much against ended up indulging it. I mean why would you be disappointed in having a female child and go ahead to hide her identity and convince the whole kingdom 
that your child was a male just for her to sit on the throne why couldn't she just let her be the the female she was the woman she was and then train her to become a woman who was a woman as she put it in the beginning of the story so by making the world believe that she had a male child and by virtue of that gender the child had the right to the throne she became just like the eldest of the Ebusa kingdom how different was she from the men in the Ebusa kingdom when she was ready to let her daughter usurp another female's right to the throne there are a lot of namayas in the world today a lot of women in the bid to fight for equality end up regarding femininity as weakness and therefore glorifying themselves in masculinity i believe there is power in femininity and the way to champion our cause is to embrace the feminine energy and dominate in whichever field you find yourself with it once you call yourself a man and give yourselves other titles pertaining to masculinity you are telling us that it is only men who can achieve the feat you as a woman has achieved so you have to call yourself a man to show that you are strong women are strong too we see man against man or man versus man where it is nanaya against anyone who denied her of her rights to the Ebisa kingdom also Ousu and nanaya fall within or fall under this conflict where nanaya is seen as a dictator who forces Ousu to live a life that she nanaya created without thinking of the consequences it might have on Ousu. there is also man versus self Ousu's life is a lie and we see her struggling with herself there is also man versus self where there is an internal conflict within nanaya she struggles with herself because of the decision she had to take to let her daughter become the ruler of Ebusa kingdom. Also, Ousu herself, or should I say himself, has some internal struggles or conflicts within himself with regard to keeping up with the lie his mother or her mother has sold him. There is also man versus nature, where gender, which is a natural orientation, stands in the way of Nanaya and the stool she so desired to possess or which she was originally rightfully hers then we have man versus society in this conflict societal norms or custom oppose the characters citing a few examples nanaya Ousu, echa and nana kwekudria all got to that point in the play where they had to dispute the customs of ebusa kingdom this play is such that if we decide to analyze or appreciate all the elements in it we might end up recording for hours so on that note i would bring today's appreciation to an end you can engage me in the comment section you can also leave your favorite quote from the book in the comment section